Calculus, differentiation, quadratic and cubic functions. Example 1. The quadratic function fx is equal to ax squared, or y equals ax squared. Find the derivative of the function fx is ax squared from first principles, or y equals ax squared. So, we we'll start now, we write the function, and in place of y, we use y plus delta y. And where we had x, we put in x plus delta x. So y plus delta y is a into x plus delta x squared. And that's x plus delta x times x plus delta x. And multiplying the terms across, we get x by x is x squared. x by delta x is x delta x. Delta x by x is x delta x. Just rearranging them. And delta x by delta x is delta x squared. So bringing them together, we get our x squared. Our x delta x and our x delta x becomes 2x delta x and our delta x squared. So that's what y plus delta y is. So working within the brackets, we can now say a x squared, 2a x delta x and a times delta x squared. So y plus delta y is all of that. Y plus delta y minus y is all of that as before, minus the value we had for y, which is minus the ax squared. Now we can start eliminating terms. y and minus y cancel, and ax squared and minus ax squared also cancel. So we're left with delta y is 2ax delta x plus a times delta x squared. Dividing across by delta x, we get delta y over delta x is 2ax delta x over delta x plus a times delta x squared over delta x. So working with that now, we can see if eliminations are possible. We can see that the delta x divided by delta x, they'd cancel, and delta x into delta x squared would go in once, so the square would fall and we'd be just left with it delta x. So delta y over delta x is 2ax plus a times delta x. When delta x becomes very small, delta y over delta x tends to the limit dy dx. And if delta x is tiny or virtually zero, a times zero is still zero. So dy dx is just this part, the 2ax. So here's the function y is equal to ax squared. We can see it there in red. And we can see that it comes down changes here, it's horizontal for a while, and then goes up and doesn't return. So generally as we move out from x to x plus delta x, we move out a certain amount and up a certain amount, we can see that it has a slope value. Using this without going from first principles, we would say y is equal to fx is ax squared dy dx of this, well we would keep the a, we would take down the 2, so we get 2a, 2ax. So 2ax is the slope of this function. So we can see that the slope depends on x. So the slope, the blue line in this case, depends on where you are in the slope. The slope is changing, for example here it's negative and here it's positive, and the function turns once. It comes from a height, goes down, turns, and then continues and doesn't return again. So a quadratic function turns once. And here we've got two different points. We can either use the point x, y and x plus delta x and start here, or had we started here, we would get a different slope. We can see that the blue line, the slope between the two points on the curve changes depending on where on the curve you are. So the slope is changing. The function turns once for a quadratic. Example 2. A cubic function, fx is ax cubed. Find the derivative of fx is ax cubed from first principles. And again, we write it as y is ax cubed. So instead of y, we put in y plus delta y, and in place of x, we put in x plus delta x. So y plus delta y is a into x plus delta x to be cubed. And that's quite an expression now to work out. So we've got x plus delta x times x plus delta x times x plus delta x. Now we've done this before, and x plus 
delta x times x plus delta x turned out to be x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. We're now going to multiply all of that by x plus delta x. So starting with the first one, we'll get x squared by x is x cubed. x squared by delta x is x squared delta x. Now the second term, 2x delta x by the first term is 2x squared delta x. And the second term by the second term is 2x delta x by delta x is 2x delta x squared. Now the third term, delta x squared by x is x delta x squared. And the third term by the third term, delta x squared by delta x is delta x cubed. So we can start bringing some of these things together. We can see that that x squared delta x and 2x squared delta x gives us the 3x squared delta x. And 2x delta x squared and x delta x squared gives us 3x delta x squared. So that's now our function now for y plus delta y. And multiplying the a in, we get y plus delta y is ax cubed plus 3a x squared. a times here gives us 3ax and a times here gives us a delta x cubed. y plus delta y minus y is exactly the same function minus the value for y, which was the ax cubed, so minus this part at the end. And now we can do some eliminations. The two y's cancel, and the two ax cubes cancel. So we're left with delta y is 3ax squared delta x, plus 3ax delta x squared, plus a delta x cubed. So here we are rewriting it. And we're going to divide everything now on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side by delta x. So delta y over delta x is 3ax squared delta x plus 3ax delta x squared plus a delta x cubed over delta x. Or we can split the three terms up. So here, exactly the same, we've just broken it up into its three components. Now we can see if there's eliminations possible. The delta x cancels into the delta x. Delta x goes in here, into the square just once, and into the cubed twice. So we're left with 3ax squared plus 3ax delta x plus a delta x squared. Now as delta x becomes very, very tiny, this number here goes to zero virtually. And zero times anything means that it's really insignificant. And here we're multiplying by nearly zero again twice, so does that becomes insignificant. So in the end, delta y over delta x becomes dy dx, or just this part here, 3ax squared. So here's the example of the cubic. Here's a, a different one, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, a general cubic. We could see there that it turns once, turns again, and cubic functions actually turn twice. But here's the point x, y, and x plus delta x, y plus delta y. And at this point here, the slope is quite high. The blue line is showing quite a high slope. If we weren't doing this for first principles, we would say y is fx is ax cubed. And the dy dx of that would be, well, we would leave the a. We would take down the 3, so it would be 3 times a, x, and instead of 3, we would reduce by 1 to get... 3 minus 1 or 2. So 3a x squared. So that would be our dy dx. We can see that the slope is changing depending on where you are on the curve and the function turns twice. So for a cubic function it turns once and then again. And there's the slope for a different value. We can see that as we move down or up the blue line is changing quite remarkably depending on where we start with our x y. And equally, if we go back further, the slope is actually negative, and then positive, and then increasingly positive. 